Buenos Dias Gunners Collective. Back at it, you already know. Like a mother, like a motherfucking smack at it. Orale, as you can tell by that thumbnail right there, Mongolians, right? The historia, the history of why Norteños wore, and some do continue to wear, Mongolians. And in menudo style and direct fashion, let me give you guys the rundown. See, this question has been posed to me. It's been asked several times, a lot of times, and I never got around to doing it because I thought it was not really that major. So no one ever hit me on my pager, but... Yes, they did definitely ask me about this, and I thought that for no other reason I should finally answer this question. Because that's what they want to know. Yeah, they'll hold, right? So trip out the Mongolian. Um, it's a different type of hairstyle. It's something that if you're from Northern California, you have definitely noticed uh, younger bottles rocking it, especially in the 80s and 90s, 2000s. It was very prevalent. People were out there rocking among. I had a Mongolian for several years. Um, and it meant something to me. My brother had one, so I was gonna have primos, tios, fucking grandfathers. Orale, everybody had a Mongolian. Everybody was representing Norte Califas. But what was the true meaning behind the Mongolian? Was it the representation of Northern California? Or was it something just a little bit different? Well, of course, everything is derived in prison when it comes to California politics. For the most part, 99.9% .9 of the shit that happens in the Pinta eventually spills out to the calles and we get affected by it and so can we run with it and in that fashion. You know, our antennas need to be up when it comes to the politics of prison because Sasuke eventually, huh, you're going to be rocking what they're rocking. So trip out. Let me give you a little bit of the history. The Mongolian is derived from the Mongols. The Mongol nation, and I'm not talking about the Mongols over here in Southern California, Sasuke con un cheleco and the Viklas. Nah, not that Mongol, right? They got them too. Um, but I'm talking about Mongolia, the original Mongolia, Southeast Asia, or is it Asia, um, where warriors once sported Mongolians. Now, why did they do this? Different tribes, different fucking clicas, basically, had their Mongolian hairstyles. Some had them on the side, some had them in the front, going on fucking paisa at the bar in the 90s. Some had them in the back. And the reason why they did this was because it depended on what type of helmets they wore for war that that braid would fit. That braid symbolized something within their tribe, being a warrior. The more braids you had meant the more battles that you were involved in, meant the level of warrior and the level of warriorism, utterly warriorism, word of the day, that you have achieved. Okay, so this is where it stemmed from. It stemmed from battles, and it was traditional to them. It meant something. You know what I mean? Behold, the man with two fucking Mongolians coming up the side looking like Punky Brewster. Orale. He was a battle-tested warrior. Straight up. Um, every different country has different meanings for things that they do. Okay? They have historia, history. Just like Latinos have history. So, okay, look at, the, look at the fucking calendar. We have our own history. Um, of course, the Vikings have a deep history. The Africano brothers have a deep history with the Zulu Nation and several other tribes, right? Everybody has their own historia. Okay, so the Mongolian came and was derived from Orle Genghis Khan and his people that fought and battled and triumphed and fucking basically raped, robbed and pillaged anyone that they seen. That's how they got down, right? They were getting their Genghis on, you know what I mean? In a calm fashion. So trip out. In the late 80s, when the Norteño and the Sureño uh, wars were really happening in prison or the Southsiders and Norteño wars were happening in prison, um, the Norteños had to devise a plan when they hit these yardas to identify each other. Okay, this is simply put. This is why the Mongolian, the Norteños started to rock the Mongolian in the first in, in first place. Um, they needed something so that they stood apart, so that they could identify. You got to understand, this time, what was happening was the California Department of Corrections were throwing just a handful of Norteños onto yards that were more predominant Southsiders, Right. And, you know, quietly as it's kept, I know now they've got this like, oh, I could tell a Southside and Norteño the difference right off the top because of the bald heads and because of this and the way they dress. And they're judging books by its covers. But back in them days, in the 80s, everybody had the smooth hair going back homes, the motherfucking high fucking tramaus creased up, you know what I mean? Clean ass fucking shoes. Everybody was looking pretty much the same. You couldn't just see someone and identify, okay, they're from Northern California, they're from Southern California. That's not the way it worked. Okay, you didn't know. 
And this gave you less of an advantage if you were a Norteño because there was only a few of you on these yardas. So you would get there. You wouldn't know who your homeboys were. You wouldn't, who can I run to? You didn't know who to turn to. Who was your ally? Who had your back? So some of the Norteños in the back in the oil decided that for no other reason, they should come up with some type of civilization, basically a code, so that Norteños were able to decipher when they got to these yards who was who and what was what. And one of them decided to come up with something called the Mongolian haircut. Okay, not only because the Mongolian style haircut symbolizes a warrior, it symbolized someone that was ready for battle, battle-tested warriors that were ready and they were down. There always has to be some type of symbolization that, that directly links warriorism. Vatos that are down for the cause, vatos that are ready to go no matter what to the fucking wheels fall off, to the Dayton's are crooked, right? This is how it is. You know, it's always going to be like that. Hey, how about we get a fucking tattoo or a burger right here? You know what I mean? Because Burger King, we can have it our way. Charlie Holmes, I don't think that works, but we're going to have it our way. Yeah, we're going to have it our way regardless. But I don't think we need a fucking hamburger to prove that. Con un whopper with cheese? I, I think that would be cool. Yeah, for you, not for me. For me, I want a fucking chongo in the back flowing. But the Genghis Khan shit. Um, so anyways, it was decided that this Mongolian would be civilization for the North. But not only that, would also be a lightweight code. So that way, when you hit these yardas, right? You were able to find homeboys that had Mongolians. You automatically knew they were from Northern California. They represented like you. So I was getting bang, there's the homeboys right there. And everybody was able to rock together. So it was basically lightweight code. Now, of course, this uh, what this did, what this Mongolian did was two things. So I was getting one, and let everybody know where you were from. So that put a target on your back. Okay, the first idea was smart. Okay, we can get there. We can identify the homeboys. Bang, you know what it is. We're going to kick it off. We're going to get down or whatever the case may be. Um, and let other Northanians know that you were rocking in parallel. You were rocking simultaneous slice, side, simultaneously side by side with them. Everybody was all good in the hood. So I let's, go, let's, go, let's go, right? But at the same time, it also let the administration know and the Southsiders, the enemigas know, the opposition at that time, exactly who you were. Here you come with the long flowing ass Mongolian. That's a Northanian right there. That's right off the top. That's my target, right? So they knew exactly who to target. So it kind of backfired. It kind of reversed. And I think over time, um, and so many people getting booked and so many people getting moved on because of this, um, the Norteños decided that if for no other reason, somewhere in the late 90s, to cease the Mongolian. It got to the point where um, you would get incarcerated and you were told that your Mongolian had to go. Now, there was a lot of autos on the guys when they hit the guys that took pride in this. I was one of them. Okay, not necessarily on the guys. I did it in CYA just because all the other, I was a follower, Bato. All the other homeboys were getting fucking Mongolians. I felt like I should start growing one myself. Now, a Mongolian, for those of you that don't know what it is, look in the thumbnail. That's it. That's two different versions. That's the bald version, con un pinchy patchy hair right here, that eventually grows a long flowing warrior braid. Or you have vatas that are kind of new school, smooth. That's how I used to do it, con un pinchy fade, and it flows into the Mongolian. Hainas liked it better that way. Says que? So did I. It was, just, it, was, it was tighter, I thought. Anyways, however you wanted to do it, I've met homeboys with chongos at the side of their head. I never met anyone con un pinche antenna hanging up their head. Um, but none of the homies wanted to look like a fucking cucaracha from the hood. But I guess it has happened. Um, so when we were told to cease all activity and to cease getting these uh, uh, Mongolians, a lot of homeboys took it as an affront. They were like, Sarska, we've been told for years that this was the symbolization for the North, but it wasn't. It was never the symbolization for the North. It was a symbolization of a warrior that Norteños basically fucking took. Sahas, we're going to go ahead and need that. Separate ours from yours, right? To have a code while incarcerated, okay? And it backfired. It definitely backfired, like I said, because the administration and the opposition was was easily able to pinpoint who was who and what was what. Just, so I, thought, I thought it was going to be all good in the hood. Well, was it? It wasn't good in the hood, right? And eventually, over time, both those decided, Charlie Holmes, we need to cease that. And when you're told, Holmes, to cut your fucking hair and to get rid of something, you're just going to do it. Pin... But I'm attached to it. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> it's not attached to you no more. I guess it ain't. Hey, uh, let's get going on homie fade. And then, of course, Northenia started to derive what was called the homie high fade, uh, where all the homies would get a fade. We have always had long hair. There's been a difference, okay? There's a big difference when it comes to hairstyles between the North and South back in the 80s and 90s, maybe early 2000s. Nowadays, everyone has everything. So everyone's an island, boy. So you don't know what the fuck is going on, right? Um, but I remember 
uh, when I heard that we had to cut our Mongolians off. And just like anybody else, um, at first I was like, Charlie, I was attached to it, literally, right? Um, but not only that, I had grown accustomed to my Mongolian. It was something that um, showed pride in the North. It was something that showed um, exactly what I represented, just like the red finial and red clothing symbolized exactly what I represented. But then I remembered, you know what I mean? And I went, I said, self? You know what I mean? Because I spoke to myself, I said, self? It's some J-Cash shit. Um, you don't need anything to show your representation. If anything, you need to fly under the radar, homes, so you can sneak attack on their ass, right? So I knew enough and was laced up enough and indoctrinated enough to know that I had to let that Mongolian go. And I did. Sars, it, it was a sad day. Such guy donated to a cancer patient. I had to get rid of it. I told my brother the same thing. He kind of wanted to hold on to his for a little bit longer. Eventually, he got with the program. We let him go. Okay, we let him go because that's what the North did dictated. See, whatever the homeboys, the North did told me I had to do, I was on that wavelength. So, Spencer, Spencer, yes, I was letting a grown man tell me what to do. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily a grown man, but a cause, right? Whatever, the, whatever was going to help the cause or benefit the cause at that exact time is what I did. If we needed fucking Mongolian, so there, let's go. Mongolian time. If we didn't need them anymore, sas, see you later, super cuts, right? It was whatever it was. That was the true civilization of a warrior. Now, uh, for the people that said, well, it represented the North, they, they, that's what I thought too, the whole time growing up. That's what I thought. Hey, only North Daniels get Mongolians. Um, but a lot of things started to change. I've actually seen bottles from down south, and I'm not going to say which hood, I'll actually have a Mongolian. And I tripped. I said, hey, you a homeboy? He said, I'm a homeboy. I said, where you from? He said, Sur. I said, you ain't my homeboy, right? Um, and the reason behind him having that Mongolian was he believed in the same thing that the Norteños thought too, which was being a warrior, the symbolization of a warrior. Okay, like I said, man, there was a lot more that went into Norteños having it. And that was just basically an identification mark. And I've said that. Um, but he also had one, of course, he ran into a few of his homeboys that was like, cut that fucking farmer shit off your head. Orale, he cut it off, and that was it. Um, but he was growing one. Now, subsequently, since all that, there's Mongolian bikers who have been around for a long time, the Mongols, right? Um, and the Mongols, you'll see a lot of vatos down in Los, um, different areas where they have clubhouses that are rocking the Mongolian. But they're not rocking the Mongolian for the same reasons the Norteños rock the Mongolian, right? They're rocking it for the pride of their patch and for the pride of the warrior that it displays, okay? They have a patch with the guy with the free-flowing free Mongolian on it. And yes, that is what a Mongo entails. And that's what they rock. Now, not all of them. Some of them are like, fuck that. This shit looks funny. But for the most part, there are some um, that want to identify with that patch and want to show their love for their club, okay? That's something totally different. But when you see about those looking down the wrong way, I'm headed on the highway already. Going on Mongolian, it looks fresh. I ain't going to lie. It takes me back. And I said, damn, I wish I could grow one. But I can't because I got a pancake head because I always wear hats. I'm scared. I'm getting old and I'm just not scared to admit it. Mm. Bang, bang. Plus, I got shot in the back of my shit. Fuck my Mongolian all up. My Mongolian was half. I, they called it the half Golian. I had a half Golian because the fucking Africano blew half my fucking Mongolian off, allegedly. Right? It just was what it was. Anyways, um, even now to this day, I still see several Norteños having the Mongolian. Most of them are of a younger era, right? They're youngsters, and they're doing it for the civilization of the North. Don't get them twisted, man. And, and, I, and I don't sit there and try to tell them anything, because first of all, I'm not in it. My name's Bennett. It's not my reason to tell them, but I see it, and I just smile to myself, because I remember when I once was striving in that exact same realm, right? I was striving like, that, but like orale, Mongolian time. Um... But I already know that as soon as they get incarcerated, they will be asked to get rid of that shit. You know, and it sucks. It sucks when you got to feed them a chongo. You've grown it for a long time. Going to braid. You have your hyena braided up. Says, get down, man. Get down, demon. Right? And she gets down. And then you get locked up for fucking domestic on her ass. Right? And so I was like, cut that shit. Put the right. Next thing you know, you get out your ball. She's like, oh, no. I want someone with the Mongolian. Now she's with your homeboy Jaime. And you're stuck like Chuck with a big ass bald patch. It'd be like that sometimes. Don't trip. Orale. You're still in North Daniel, right? Striving. Um, and that's a fact. But that is where it was derived from. That is why North Daniels got the Mongolian. Okay. Now I've seen a lot of Asians rocking the Mongolian. Maybe not necessarily in California, but I have seen them like in the Midwest. Um, and a lot of them get the tail. Now the tail is totally different from a Mongolian. A Mongolian, like I said, was placed up on top of the back of the crown of the head, as well as the sides and the fronts, right? 
Um, and a tail was something different. They called it the duck tail, the rat tail, the fucking, I don't know what it is, tail. And there's, so, there's a, a well-known rapper from Northern California that still has his tail. It's clean as a motherfucker. He's been having it. It's one of his trademarks, right? Everyone knows when they see that tail, they know he's coming. You know what I mean? He's coming on some yacht shit. And that's just plain and simple, period. Um, so a lot of people have ro been rocking that. Nowadays, uh, the Norteños get a different type of haircut. And not all of them. I'm just saying um, some of them do. And what they got going on now is that drill shit. They got that fucking line. It looks like kind of like a mullet, but it's not. It's that shit that they're getting out there in Chicago, Indiana, you know, with the long hair dropped in the back, fade up top. So I'm scared. It looks smooth, but at the same time, I can't call it an orderly dog, the bounty hunter. It's how I feel sometimes. It just depends on where I'm at. Um, but the Mongolian is a thing of the past. Every once in a while, you'll see these rap videos. You'll see some young guy uh, rocking the Mongolian. It's, that's just a civilization for the North. He's just showing what he's down for. But like I said, it doesn't mean anything anymore. Not like it once did, you know, it, it basically it once was there for safety and security. That was the main gist of it. It wasn't there for pride and for everyone to know, hey, I'm a Norteño, puto, right? It wasn't none of that. It was basically for the safety and security and to identify the next man as being a homeboy. So that way, when we were able to go on the Miaradas in the CDC, California Department of Corrections, we could secure ourselves with a couple homeboys. There was, you got to understand this integration shit that's going on nowadays They've been doing this. This is a repeat cycle. Life is a repeat cycle. Shit repeats over and over and over and over again, right? It's going to be Oreo cookie. So it gets perfectly round. It just rolls and rolls and rolls, right? It just goes over and over again. They've always done this integration. You know, I was part of it in the beginning, man, when they integrated Norteños and Southsiders down in LA. You know what I mean? Down South. So it was ugly, right? But I was part of that. Part of that historia. They did it. They've been doing it. Putting Norteños down in Southern California uh, uh, yardas sporadically a little bit a little bit over here a little bit over there like here which way do we go right and that's why the mongolian was derived so that way we can know right let's 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 handle our business um and then later on like i said it was used as a target okay when um those who are in position see that that it, it becomes fucking something that's detrimental to the cause or detrimental to the soldado and the manpower it's got to go. Sounds good. Well, hey, but what about if we fucking grow like a fucking chin strap right here? Going, hey, but what if they start noticing it? Detrimental. Got to go. Right? Everything's got to go. Um, that's why even in prison, there's certain tattoos you can display and certain tattoos you can't. I remember for the longest time, Northenders weren't even allowed to get sleeves. It was half sleeves. Homeboys would all be from right here, all tatted back. But when they had a shirt on... It looked like a fucking L L7, right? Like a straight square. You couldn't even tell the homeboys are all tatted down. Because um, the Norteño cause is bigger than everybody else, every individual. No one man is bigger than the Norte. And if the Norte says, hey, homes, we need to do this, everything is for a reason. It's so that you don't become targeted by administration and enemies. That's the main thing. Manpower is very sacred. We need every spoke is what we used to say. So I was like, we need you, brother, right? We need everybody because everyone always knew the Norte wasn't that deep. Never had numbers. Always was short in numbers, but was fucking large in heart in Cora. And that's a fact, man. And they continue to strive that way. Now, of course, with all this different shit going on with North and South actually, man, having to end the hostilities and lightweight kicking down these yards and making it an active, non-active thing, things have changed. Will you see the reemergence of the Mongolian? For some, maybe. Maybe it's about pride. Maybe it's about showing the difference between actives and non-actives. So it could pop up. One never knows, man. Like I say, history repeats itself. But at the same time, I just wanted to answer the questions that have been posed to me consider, concerning the history of the Mongolian. Like I said, it wasn't something that the North did started. It was something that the North did derived from Mongolia and used it, utilized it throughout the 80s and 90s for a code. With that being said, I hope that you move fast. With, I hope I answered the question, but I hope that you move fast with a purpose. I hope that you get everything that you want coming to you. Remember, at the end of the day, it's all about your family, your struggling, struggling. If you want to get a fucking Mongolian, get one. Just, just remember, when you get to jail, you will cut it off. Bang, bang. Plain and simple and period. Um, with that being said, I hope that you guys have a wonderful weekend. Again, my prayers go out to my boy, the Salinas Report, who I know is not having the greatest weekend in the world, man. And I can only imagine, but I am with you, brother, in heart, spirit, and mind, brother. The shit don't stop. Please uh, hit that like, subscribe, so let's get thumbs up, or you can hit that thumbs down. Heavy is the head that wears the crown, man. If you continue to uh, not want to watch me, so I'll get don't watch me. It's just that plain and simple. If you like watching me, so get ba -da -ba 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 -ba. we're going to keep doing what we does, cuz. And in that fashion, oh, pow, bro, I used to have a Mongolian.
Rock Cutter. Bang, bang.